so so hello every student so today we uh, will continue the task lesson in the in our class of uh, scheduling and sequencing so here uh, before we go to the further detail of scheduling first of all I want to uh, help you to uh, uh, how to build the constraint in a mathematical linear model so the main reason for that is uh, when we deal with the scheduling or sequencing model it very frequently that we will miss a lot of the common constraints for example here about the capacity constraints, mass mean constraint, the n constraint then and the r constraints right so the main problem is how can we handle this kind of constraint in most efficiency way so I think that the more efficiency it is mean that we can transform it into the line A constraint. So when we already constrain it or transform it in the line A constraint, right? We can utilize the powerful of some uh, some verb, for example, Cplet or Vorobis or something like that, and we can solve it. So here the main objective of this class is how can we transform the constraints into the linear form. Now, first of all, we uh, consider about the uh, structure of this class. The first is about the upper, upper facility decision. The second one is how can we handle the mass constraint. The first one is how can we handle with the means constraint, the end condition, the R condition, and C equals to X multiply with X Y constraint. So here, one at least one x or y must be the binary variable and now with a little bit we consider about the conflicted condition right and the conflict condition when starting an end time variable right and uh, before the end maybe we consider the head the session chain absolute value for the binary variable and uh, maybe if we have time we will consider the Thirteen session shop for multiple resources. So here now we consider the first one we up with the open facility the season. So here in uh, reality, right? So the season variable relating directly, for example, up on the one facility, it will be a loss when we make the decision about the up and one facility. A lot another variable the season will be. Uh, associating directly with the opening facility decision for example the quantities of the products or uh, for example another one is the transportation from the another facility to our facility right so here in open facility decision usually that we require one C CJ be the capacity regarding to facility C and pick M be the very last number and OJ will be the binary decision variable. OJ will be equal to 1 if the facility J is open and otherwise J equal to be 0. So here, so the most common way to define the problem relating to open facility decision will be in the left hand side it will be smaller than or equal to the CJ multiplied with OJ capacity multiplied with whether we should upon the facility or the big M multiply with all shades right and now the second one that we are interested in is about the mass constraint so here why I say that this is about the mass constraint for example now let's say we consider the mass constraint X equal to the mass A and 0 right now let's see the case so here in Tidus, uh, I need to emphasize some things. I will use Tabernet on the work file so you can uh, get more intuition about how can we deal with it, right? So first of all, let's see the mark contain happen what, when. So for example, now we need to consider about the scheduling and uh, maybe we need to consider the overtime, right? So the overtime will be only happen uh, when the total time, the total working time is greater than some uh, 
when the total time will be greater than some breakdown value. For example, here, now let's consider. Now I will type in here so you can consider it right over time. Right, must be equal to the total time. Right, but capacity. Right, or the available time. Right. So here. Now let's say. In this case, that the available time, if right total time is smaller than zero, is smaller than the available time, right? Available time. So the total the overtime must be equal to zero, right? And in case this case, that the overtime, the total time greater than the available time right so order must be equal to zero and if total time a greater than available time so order must be equal to heat right So now, the problem is, so by on this kind of information, so we can represent if we list A equal to total time, right, minus available time, so the auto over time will be equal to max of A and 0, right. So here, the constraint is max A and 0, this will be non-linear constraint, so, right. I zero. This is not line it. right? So that's why we must line it So in this case, I will help you to line line rise the this constraint, right? Now, so when x and i are variable, this constraint can be transformed into the line form so let's with y will be the index variable y equal to 1 if i greater than 0 and y equal to 0 if i smaller than or equal to 0 so here basically the relationship between i and y can be spread under the form like this i greater than big m multiplied with y minus 1 and i smaller than big m multiplied with y minus 1 so now let Double check it whether it's correct, right? So here, if we put y equal to one here, we have the a must be greater than zero. In here, a must be smaller than some infinity value, positive infinity value. So this will be always satisfied, right? Now reverse the is the value of y. So here, if y equal to 0, so i must be greater than some negative infinity, and here, i must be smaller than 0, right? So here, we already, by on this and this, we already set up the relationship between y and i, right? And now we consider the relationship between x and mass a 0. Now, by on this kind of information, we will have this 0 smaller than x smaller than 0 plus big A multiplied with y. And this one, x must be greater than i smaller than i plus big A multiplied with y. Sorry, 1 minus y. So now let me check. Okay. Now, y equal to 1. What will happen? So when y was to 1, x greater than 0, right? And x smaller than a and greater than a, so x must be equal to a. This one, what we want, right? And now when y equal to 0, 
S must be smaller than zero, or greater than zero, S must be equal to zero, and here S must be smaller than some infinity value and greater than some negative value. So here the relationship between S and must be zero is already set up, right? So now, what we need to remember here is for the nonlinear constraint s equal to max of a and zero. Now, what we need to do is we transform this nonlinear constraint into one, two, three, four, four linear constraint, and this four linear constraint will be set up the equivalent of nonlinear constraint s equal to max a and zero, right? And so here, now we move to another one will be s equal to max a and b, right? So basically the s equal to max a and b. Now let's see. We can s equal to max a and b, right? So basically we can transform it directly. Sorry, like this. Now if y equal to 1 if i minus b greater than 0 and y equal to 0 if we like this and here from the previous result we can do it and now right by on this we can set up the equivalent of this So for the section 2.3 attention of the mass constraint, right? It uh, common does you can rely on the previous work. Here we need x equal to mark the sum of ci multiplied with y i method i. Right? So if you if we take that the sum of ci multiply with y i minus i x the one variable, right? So we here it will be some x max of some variable and zero and we can apply further by on the previous or the former session 2.1 to consider with this to handle this right and now let's say the minimum constraints right so here x will be equal to mean of a zero and now this mean constraint can be handled in the same way x max constraints right first of all we but have one the index variable y. One if i greater than zero, zero if i smaller than zero. Though in, in the same way with the mass constraint, we will have this. Now, the only thing need to change is the last two final constraints. So let's say when y equal to one, s must be greater than zero, right? And smaller than zero, so s must be equal to zero. And here, when y equal to 0, what will happen? y equal to 0, so x greater than i, and i is smaller. And here, x greater than the, some finest, some negative infinity. So this will be satisfied of the above description. So basically, that you need to do away here. We have the means constraint and we transform it into the four linear equivalent constraint of this and this. And you can apply the same way with the minimum constraint of section 2.3.2. Right? <clears throat> and um, another kind of constraint that maybe we can meet very frequently in reality or uh, in problem is the end condition. So here let's see. Now we are given x, i will be the binary variable, and we also have y, we also be a binary variable, and y related to x, y to an n operator. So here y equal to x1, and with x2, and with x3, and up to xn. So if you can think that like this, like y equal to S1 multiply with S2, right, S3, and put them multiply with S8, right. 
So here now the brain problem is uh, here this end condition is non-linear, right? So our main objective is how can we transform this non-linear into the non-linear form so can we can put up into the solver to help us to solve our problem. So this kind of problem can be transformed into the linear form like this. Why? much smaller than Si and Y must be greater than the sum of Si minus N plus 1 so let's check whether we have this correctly right now uh, some last 1 Si will be equal to 0 right so here Si will be equal to 0 so Y must be become equal to 0 right and here one of them must be equal to zero, so the sum this will be smaller than n, right? At the result of this, so y must be greater than zero and smaller than zero, so it must be equal to zero. And now, when all of s i equal to one, so here s i equal to one, y smaller than whole one, and here y must be greater than some of them will be equal to n, n minus n become 0, plus 1 become 1, so here n smaller than 1 and n greater than 1, y, y smaller than 1 and y greater than 1, so at the final result, it y must be equal to 1, so it already satisfy the n condition. And uh, now we move to another kind of binary condition, or the R condition. So here we are given x, y, s, i, and y are also binary, right? Y relating to other x to the performance like this. S1, r with x2, r with x3, and r with s n. And now this guy of relationship can be transformed to into the line form like this. Y must be greater than Si and Y must be smaller than the sum of all Si. Now let's see. So we know that in the R condition, if 1 Si equal to 1, Y must be equal to 1. And Y only be equal to 0 when whole Si will be equal to 0. So here, if 1 Si equal to 1, so Y must be greater than, than what? Y must be greater than 1 and Y must be smaller than 1 plus something, right? So in re in center of y must be greater than 1, so y must be equal to 1, right? And in China, on si equal to 0, so y must be greater than 0, and on si equal to 0, so the sum of this will be equal to 0. So greater than 0 is smaller than 0, so basically y must be equal to 0. Right? And uh, we move a little bit to the C equal to X multiply with I constraints, right? So here, in data set equal to X multiply with I constraints, so we are given X a binary variable and Y must be greater than 0, right? Now here, this constraint can be transformed to the line A form like this. C equal to pick A multiply with X and this one. Right, the first one, two and three. Now let's check, recheck that whether this is exactly represent the relationship of C equal to X multiplied with I. So it's X equal to one. So C must be smaller than positive infinity, right? Here, it must be equal to zero. And here, this must be equal to zero. So C smaller than y and c greater than y so in general c equal to y right and now when x equal to zero right so here c must be equal smaller to zero right here it will be zero and zero so so it will be c smaller than some infinity positive infinity greater than some uh, negative infinity and he z on way greater than zero so he is fucked with z will be equal to zero uh, 
Uh, so here now we consider another kind of uh, much very common condition a common constraint a uh, scheduling and sequencing it is about the conflict condition for example here now uh, some not we uh, have to chop i and j right and uh, the chop must be finished in the time window from the starting time and in time right up uh, and starting time ending time of i and j right so here if we had a the time window i overlap right so the chop cannot be assigned to the same machine or the same worker and uh, the chop are called conflicted chop for one machine and if we already know the starting time and ending time of both of two chop right we can from this type of parameter, we can set up another kind of parameter which we can call the CIJ or the parameter represent where the two chart I and J are conflicted. Now, so here we have first of all EIM. It's be the enable matrix so e i m equal to one if chop i is possible to be assigned to worker m otherwise e i m will be equal to zero and here we have the c i j be the conflicted matrix c i j equal to one if chop i and chop j cannot be assigned to the same worker m due to the overlap constraints and the season variable s b y m equal to 1 if chop i assigned to worker m otherwise s i m will be equal to 0 right and so here we will have the basic constraint so here if c i j equal to 1 that means that what will happen two of chop s i and h i can be not be assigned at the same time to the machine m or the worker m here so just at least one of them i equal to 1 right and this guy will be uh, one shot just be assigned to one machine and if one shot i cannot be assigned to the machine to the enable aim is for the sim will be equal to zero right so this guy of problem um, you can consider it more clearly in the case of the fly assigned to gate right so fly state I'm sorry assignment right so if we have the fly uh, will be all right all right the uh, airport right and for example I am and they will stand here up to I am if and if a similar we have fly to arise at my airport at my aim and departure sorry I am <clears throat> right so here now let's see so this fly one will occupy the stain of the air box during period of seven up to nine and another fly the fly two will be occupy the stain of air box from am up to 11 am so basically they are overlap right so you cannot assign it into the same gaze right sorry into the same stand during the standing at the airport right so here in this game we will have the ci chase right of the fly one and fly two right will be equal to one right and now let's see some that we will have three and will be equal to one two three right we have some that we have three steps 
Now let's pack a little bit into this. So for on M, right? As I'm not we have M equal to one. So S one one plus S two one must be smaller than two minus C I J here equal to one. So here, right? Just one of them are allowed to equal to one, right? And this to ensure that one chap can be one fly can be assigned into the stain only one and if the fly are not suitable for the stain it cannot be assigned right so I already show you the conflicted condition when the starting time and ending time of the sum job are not right So here, let's see. I will explain a little bit to the shop multiple resources in Kaidan. You know about the the when the fist when the each chart had a fist starting time and ending time, right? <coughs> so here now we are some that we have five chart with the number from one up to five. <coughs> we have starting time and ending time of each chart. We are given like this, and we have the result set of each chart. Blah 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 like this. So this means that chart one. When it's conducted, it y result 1 and 3. Top 2 when the process is required, result number 2 and number 3, right? So here, how can we handle this kind of constraints? Right? So here, first of all, we are conflicted the, we set up the conflicted graph, right? Right, so here in this guy last decision variable must to s Right, so here, now let's see, for the chop number 2 and the chop number 3, we have the link between chop number 2 and chop number 3, because why? So here, the starting time of ending time of chop number 2 and not chop number 3 are overlap, right? And during this, they use, they have the resource of them, the resource uses of them have the common factor here in this case. We wait the uh, result number two and result number three. But um, I use the line. If so, only one of them are also occupied by two chop, we call this we wait the uh, also conflicted. Now, let's see how can we handle this kind of problem. <coughs> now we call OIGT's matrix. We will each chop I and chop J are overlap at time T. Here we have another kind of index will be index of time T. T will be run from 0 equal to up to T. T is the maximum and in time here in this guy. And the problem T must be equal to 12. Right. And now each chop I and chop J then all I see T equal to 1. Right. So overlap, uh, overlap, not right. And here we consider of IGS will be the resourced matrix. So if chop J requires resourced S, then 
IG is equal to 1, otherwise IG is equal to 0. And we also have NS be the maximum number of resources S. Right. Now let's see. We have the constraint RS. Here is the out of, uh, of the function we want to maximize the weight that using this. Right. And now we will have the constraint of this. So RS ES. Right. So here, what does it mean? So if Xi, for now, let's consider one chart. For example, chart I. If chart I require one result of S, right, then Res of this will be equal to 1. Si multiply with 1 must be smaller than result set of Si. And here, we have the OIGT and RJS. So, here, let's see that if J, right, overlap with I, and J also using resource S, right, and J are what? As selected, right? So this one will be equal to how much? So here, this one will be equal to 1. And at given specific T, right? Total resources using by SI and also another SJ that overlap with SI must be smaller than NS. Right now, let's consider here. Maybe we are consider the same here. Now, we have chapter and three. Right, uh, overlap. Right, and now we have chapter. Right, error. So one, sorry, add to one, add to two, equal to one, and add to two, equal to three. Right. <coughs> add to one. E was to one and add to three, e was to one. Right. And here, right, so I need to consider this. Now we are given D. E was to, oh, sorry, E was to, maybe, let's see, five. Four, right so now let's consider at like this we are consider i equal to two we also consider chap two right so we have the a two one multiply with x two and here for result two so Add to two multiply with x two plus right here we have using result number two and only chop three right so here and let's see and one
or on oh two three it's the equal to four right and multiply with what is three plus Hmm. Now let's consider the soft one to one at time for S one for a soft tray. Right, so the sharp trait, right, and here sharp four, so four, st was so four, and now sharp five, so five, and s five, right. So here, now let's see what will happen here. So, ST equal to 4, chop 1 and chop 2. ST equal to 4. We need to back here. ST equal to 4. This up between chop 1 and chop 2 will be equal to 1. But Chop 1 does not still result number 2, so it will be equal to 0. So, whole of this will be equal to 0. Right. So, chop 3. Right. Chop 3 gives the result number 2. Right. And this is also equal to 1. And here is also. So, here must be. This multiply with it is equal to 1. So, here must be equal to x3 so by on this right now we have the equivalent of this like this x2 plus 0 is to r12 equal to 0 plus x3 right here this not using any result so it must be 0 multiplied with something so it must be equal to 0 right plus here Zero. So zero multiply with the rest will be equal to zero, right? And here, it must be equal to the number two, right? So here, it is equal to four. Only it two and it three are considered during the contract, right? And so this is the meaning of this. And uh, let's see. And so here we have back, let me back to the, the absolute constraints. Let's make the absolute value. And here, this will consider the case equal to a minus the absolute value of a minus b. So this will be. For example here, now, it's usually used when we need to uh, add something change in uh, our schedule, when we reschedule, and we want to minimum the change of this. So now let's say a little bit, I will uh, disable that for this. Now SCM. So one if fly C E aside to so machine M right and otherwise I have it was so zero right so now the problem is sometimes the fly will be a right late right and we cannot assign it at usual or at the first or the initial schedule so we need to reschedule right so here when but when we reschedule we cannot change on assignment at all 
we want just want to minimize the chains right so here if okay that's we want to minimize the chain we will have set minimum the sum right of the sum for on c m not the what s c m minus y c m when the y c m will be the new value of the ray schedule right here this may not minimum the chain so if s c m equal to y c m this minute will be equal to zero and it is kind of different right this will be create value of one and we want to minimize the chains the sum of the chains so hey now we are sum that x a and b are binary variable so hey s must be greater than a minus b s must be greater than b b minus a right s must be greater than a plus b and he so here now we consider two cases when a equal to b right when a equal to b what will happen is greater than zero right and if a equal to one b equal to one so s smaller than two and here smaller than two always set it five one one so s smaller than zero greater than zero smaller than zero it will be equal to zero in this case it will be zero 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 smaller greater than zero smaller than zero so it will be equal to zero so the next thing is uh when a and b are different right so when a and b are different so at least one of them must be equal to one so this be equal to one right this is greater than minus one so it must be greater than one. So he is smaller than one. Smaller than one. So x must be equal to one, right? So he basically we in the session of this class. So uh, see you in the next class.